I think the foundational pillars have to change. I think obviously the Mitchell Gobert thing has run its course in a lot of ways, but it's not just them. It's the structure of that perimeter defense. It's frankly like I think Quinn Snyder does a lot of great things mm-hmm. as a coach. I don't know if he feels limited by what Rudy Gobert can do or not, but this is a team that is super dogmatic defensively to mm-hmm. the point that you know, I'm not even I'm not even saying you have to switch a lot. I'm not saying you have to do anything too radical, but even in this game, this deep into the series, they couldn't come up with an alternative rotation so that Rudy Gobert wouldn't have to go from the paint out to the corner to contest threes that the Mavs were still getting. Wide open corner threes. I don't know why you can't change your scheme to adapt, to adjust for that, to take away some of those possibilities, to have someone rotating from a different angle. There seems like a lot of things that could have been on the board, and yet I, I don't know why this Jazz team feels they need to play in such a limited fashion, but they absolutely have. So whatever, whatever needs to happen to take that mental block off, I think that's the first step. KOC. A good way to think about this is let's go backwards. Who are the keepers on this team? Who are the unequivocal? Well, we got to keep that guy. The Jazz, surprisingly, not that many. I mean, you could basically tell me it's just Mitchell and Bogdanovich and everybody else is expendable. You could even tell me everyone's expendable. How many keepers do you think they have? Zero. None. I mean, like the closest thing is is obviously Mitchell or Gobert. Um, But even then... That neither of those guys are untouchable. You know, you're you're open. You're listening. If somebody gives you a call, if the if the Knicks win the lottery and land a top four pick, and they're offering something with that future picks, young players for Mitchell, you're listening. If the Nets call up and say, "Hey, uh, what do you think about Ben Simmons for Rudy Gobert?" You're listening. Uh, I I think for the Utah, I'm Jazz in on that Danny, one. I, that was one of your better ideas. I mean, it, I saw that the other day. I let that that one at least solves solves some. Um, some fun content problems for us this summer as we try to think of what we're going to talk about. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a, <laughs> that's we a get a week reason. of podcasts out of that. <laughs> yeah, D- Danny, call it in for the ringer.com. Danny, yeah. thanks for the help again. <laughs> we appreciate no, it. But, but, but seriously though, like with Danny Ainge, I know people make fun of him saying almost Ainge, this and that because of some of the misses that he's had. But Danny Ainge has authored some of the bigger, riskier moves in the last 20 years in the NBA. The trade down from one to three faults for Tatum. Like that's a guts, man. Like K- how about KG and Pierce? No kidding. Exactly. Trading, even trading Al Jefferson for KG, never mind trading them away when he did for all the picks. So also he I think- took Marcus Smart and Robert Williams. He took Grant Williams. I mean, granted, you know, he took Romeo Langford in the same draft, but he did take Grant Williams, who turned out to be a really valuable role player yeah. who got right in Kevin Durant's chest and guarded him for long stretches of playoff games. I, I don't want to turn it into like a Danny Ainge love fest. I think like no, he's good though. He, he's good, and I think for Jazz fans, they they have you know head coaches for twenty plus years. They had Quinn Snyder for eight years. They're used to cores and coaching staff staying the same. But with Danny Ainge, buckle up, get ready, yeah. because this is this is someone who came into a situation that is in need of major change. Like like Rob said, it's the personnel that needs to change. Because I think with Quinn Snyder. He definitely deserves some blame for some of the rigidity with his system, but also like, like they signed Eric Pascal and Rudy Gay yeah. as their small ball guys, and then they get Hernan Gomez midseason, and it's just the options on this yeah, roster are so limited. Like if Gobert, when Gobert is pulled to the perimeter, as we saw tonight with the Jazz switching far more often in the postseason, there's nobody inside who can help offer any help if somebody gets by him. So I, I think for Utah, it's the defense that needs to change. It's the head coach that needs to change. And if the right deal is out there for either of those stars or both, uh, even that is a situation where maybe you go total blow it up mode. Um, but I'm not all the way there with them. I still think keeping one of Gobert or Mitchell could be in their best interest, depending on what the return is for one of those guys. Yeah, one thing I'm going to have a hard time getting out of my head is... Jalen Brunson just straight up outplayed Donovan Mitchell in this series. Oh, yeah. I, I, I don't know how you can feel super great about Mitchell's trajectory when something like that happens. Like, this should be the time for him when everything starts coming together in terms of how he reads the floor, when he's attacking, who he's attacking, mm-hmm. manipulating the game. And we've seen Mitchell's progress in some of those areas kind of hit a wall. And I'm, I'm waiting for the next evolution of his game. I'm, I hope he can get over whatever hump seems to be in front of him. But right now, Guys like Brunson are doing very similar things on more efficient shooting. I don't think it's a hump at this point. I think the situation is what it is. You know, he he came in with that kind of Booker, Tatum, Towns, 
Jalen Brown's kind of generation, whatever that generation is. And all those guys have ascended in different ways, especially Booker and uh, Tatum, who I think were kind of peer groups for him, right? Tatum and Mitchell were in the same draft, weren't they? 2017? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, and he's just not a two-way guy like those guys. We've talked oh, no. about this a few times on the pod, but <laughs> he's probably closer to CJ McCollum than he is to Devin Booker. He's an offense first guy. I think he's a, at least in this series, was a legitimate liability. And he got outplayed by Jalen Brunson, who's about to go in the free agent market. He's for contracts 30, 32, 35, 37 next four years. In general, we didn't mention this yet, the Jazz, they're on the books next year for 155.6. Mm. Now that's that's the number like right now without adding minimum guys, draft picks, whatever else you have. So that's a tax team. This is a team that will not be one of the best, I think, seven teams in the West next year. So we're in legitimate blow it up mode. I was looking, what if it's everybody? Because Conley's going to be the really tough one. Conley's 21 million next year. And there is no world where he's, you know, if he's in the free agent market this summer, <clears throat> he's, I would say, somewhere like a five to six. He's in that, what like Patty Mills got last summer. But maybe they're the team that takes Westbrook. Oh, Maybe a there's a version God. where... Oh. I was trying, I tried to think of a four team trade where Mitchell goes to the Knicks mm. with Hernan Gomez. Brooklyn gets Gobert. They get Derrick Rose and Royce O'Neal. The Lakers get Ben Simmons, Mike Conley, <laughs> and Kemba Walker. <laughs> and the Jazz get Russell Westbrook, Joe Harris, Taylor Horton Tucker, and RJ Barrett. And it's just, we blew it up. We got nothing left. We're going for 20 wins this year and we're building around RJ Barrett. And we'll, we'll take your Westbrook poison pill for a year. Everybody else is gone. Give us a ton of picks. The Knicks send them picks. The Lakers send them picks. Brooklyn, they just get everybody's picks and they just start over. I would rather do that than go 42 and 40 next year with, with a luxury tax, right? Yeah, this is nowhere near a luxury tax team. Like they, they just do not have the roster to justify it. And I think most damningly, they don't have any young guys who you're looking at and saying, that's the guy who's immediately going to take a jump. That's the, that's the young player in waiting yeah. That's going to transform our team. Mitchell was supposed to be that guy. Gobert was supposed to be that guy. Unless you're, I guess, miles higher on Nikhil Alexander Walker than the consensus is. I'm not looking at this <laughs> roster and seeing that. Was he on this team? He is technically on <laughs> this team. <laughs> we can yes. see him on playoffs. 